Hello, I am Father Dennis Carnero. I am a Catholic priest from the Archdiocese of Bhopal, India, but now presently working at St. Mary Parish in Buffalo Grove, Illinois. I feel privileged to be able to be asked to share my thoughts of my spirituality and my understanding of God and His people. Thank you for listening. God assures us not only of His love, but His, His tenderness and togetherness with all humanity. And then we heard in the Gospel passage, which was really very strong, Jesus said, no one can serve two masters. He will either hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. What does Jesus mean by that? All that he's saying is that our focus in life here on earth ought to be one Lord, one Master, one God. And God the Father gave us His only begotten Son so that we can focus on Jesus Christ. And in the face of Jesus Christ, we see the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God. And that ought to be our focus in life. But then the Gospel passage goes on. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear is not life more than food and body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the sky. They do not sow or reap. They gather nothing into barns. Yet your heavenly father feeds them. Once again, do not worry. Be assured that God is not only present, but also loving and compassionate. But then the important word that God uses is here. Seek first the kingdom of God and all else will be provided. Seek first the kingdom of God and all else will be provided. What and where is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is none other than the presence of God. God makes himself present to us. And that is the kingdom of God. When we can recognize and appreciate God's presence, that is the glory of the presence and the kingdom of God. In Ash Wednesday, we were assured by the church and strongly recommended develop a discipline of prayer, fasting and giving alms. But this ought to be not only a ritual, but we pray, we fast and we give alms in different ways to recognize that it was God who loves us first. It is for us to love God because God loves us. And all our discipline ought to be centered around and motivated by God's love. Now, God has always been present to us. From the beginning of time, God created the world. And in God's creation, God is always present. Just think for a short moment. If God removes God's presence from a simple thing, that thing will cease to exist. All of us, all events and all things exist because God is present to us. God's presence was present to Adam and Eve, our first parents. Till such time when they sinned and they parted from God, not God parting from them. 
but Jesus was pre- God was present to them and so he asked where are you it was then that they realized that they had parted from God it was then they recognized that they were naked stripped of everything we see it even in the sin of Cain and Abel when Cain murdered his brother Abel God asks Abel again where is your brother knowing that he was present Cain said I do not know am I my brother's keeper but he knew that God knew that what he did God was also present to Moses when Moses took the people to the exodus in the difficult times God was present in the difficult times when they were traveling God gave them food God gave them ability to be able to continue God is present and they recognize God's presence a small passage from Matthew 4:17 will tell us that God is always present and lets himself be known that he is present when Jesus was here and John the Baptist had just been present Jesus made his appearance in public from that time on Jesus began to preach and say repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand in other words Jesus becomes present to the people and how does Jesus become present to the people when he was born Joseph and Mary were kind of filled with faith not reason they recognized in this child something that was divine beyond human nature the shepherds simple ignorant people when they received the word that a child is born they came they saw and they believed when the wise men came they saw the star they followed the star they too came they saw they adored and they gave him gifts in the baptism of jesus when jesus goes to john the baptist to be baptized john the baptist asks am i to baptize you you should be baptizing me but jesus very humbly and simply said for now let it be done and when he was baptized and moving out of the river the clouds were open and the god the father in a voice said this is my beloved son listen to him jesus becomes present to the people after that jesus in preparation for his public life is moved by the spirit to go to the desert to be alone in and through the temptations of jesus the father and the spirit become present to jesus and jesus with the power and the graces of the father and the spirit is able to overcome the temptations when jesus returned from the desert he went into the synagogue and they gave him a script to read and the script that he read was the power of the spirit is upon me he has anointed me he has sent me to give sight to the blind to give health to the sick and to preach the good news to the people this was christ's mission here on earth and he did it 
He did it in many ways. The first miracle, when he was invited to the wedding at Cana, his mother came to him and said, they have run out of wine. Jesus did not realize what exactly at that time, and he tells his mother, what is that of me? My time has not yet come. But all that Mary mother told the people, do as he tells you. And Jesus, in a simple way, said, fill those jars with water. They did. Now give it to the head waiter. They gave it. And they realized that that water, by the presence of Jesus at the wedding, turned into wine, and they were able to continue the feasting. When Jesus was preaching, people brought a paralytic. And they asked Jesus to cure him. Jesus' first response was, your sins are forgiven. And then they began to wonder. We asked him to, to heal him physically. But he says, your sins are forgiven. Can only God forgive? Who is he? And Jesus hearing it said, is it easier for me to cure physically or to forgive the sins? That you may know. He says, rise, take up your mat and walk. Jesus, through his presence, not only gave that man, the paralytic, physical health, but also spiritual health. Once again, Jesus was walking with the crowds, crowded people. And a woman who had been suffering from a hemorrhage kept asking, can I be able to touch him? Can I even touch the hem of his garment? And she made her way through and there she touched him. Jesus' response was, somebody touched me. The apostles were surprised. Master, there are so many people around you. He says, no, power has gone out of me. This woman recognized the presence of Jesus and said, I only need to touch the, 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 the end of his garment and I will be healed. And yes, power went out of Jesus because she had that faith and she was healed. Then Jesus, as he was coming close to the end of his life here on earth, wanted to prepare the apostles for his death and resurrection. The purpose of his life was the presence. So he takes Peter, James and John up a hill and there he is transfigured. The true divine spirit of Jesus came to Jesus and these favorite apostles experienced the presence of Jesus in this divine form, transfigured. In the multiplication of loaves that we all heard of, Jesus takes a few bread and a few fish and feeds thousands of people. It's once again, the presence of Jesus that is able to feed so many people. Jesus, before he left, established the church, appointed Peter the rock on which the church was established. Jesus gave the teaching, but what Jesus gave us at the Last Supper this is my body, this is my blood, and that bread and wine became the body and blood of Jesus. And Jesus said, do this in memory of me. Today, we have what we call one Catholic Apostolic Church 
where from the traditions of the apostles we have this unity of community believing in Jesus Christ as the center of our lives not only do we have the face of Jesus but we have the true and real body and blood of Jesus Christ in the Eucharist today you and i have the privilege to be able to celebrate the consecration of that bread and wine and to become united as one body in Christ to celebrate this one union let us remind ourselves god is always present to us god in the form of jesus christ before he ascended into heaven collected all his apostles and gave them the authority to continue to do what he taught them to do and he said and assured them i will be with you till the end of time let us today tomorrow and every day of our life remember that jesus is always present to us and in the face of jesus we have father son and holy spirit let us also remember that when i receive the true body and blood of jesus i become an instrument of jesus to share god's presence to the world at large let me not only believe but let my faith be translated to action and let me do the good works that the scriptures teach us that jesus teaches us on my part i say please pray for me that i may be a worthy instrument and i will pray for you that you too may be worthy instruments of evangelizing the good news of jesus thank you Jesus said, go out to the whole world and announce the good news. And that's what Shalom is doing. It's bringing the good news of the Holy Spirit in action, renewing the face of the earth so that all people may know how good is the Lord, how beautiful is the work of salvation. Thank you, Shalom, for all you do to reach out, to lead the faith forward and may almighty god bless you the father and the son and the holy spirit shalom world god's own channel